Morning guys, I'm um, just going to start by going through the answers to Wednesday's lesson, so yesterday's answers. So question number four, in the paragraph beginning, there were, as I say, Malone compares the iguanodons to different animals. How do, how do these comparisons help the reader understand what they look like? So, you know, you had to read that paragraph, read the description, unlock um, what some of the phrases mean and the image that they create in your head. So by doing that, by the writer doing that, they have let us know that, you know, because we know what elephants look like and how big elephants are, they've used that in their description. So you could have had for your answer reference to providing a comparison to something the reader will recognise. So for example, um, because we know how big elephants are, they've used that phrase. We know what lizard skin is like, so that's why they've um, talked about lizards. And it, compa it compares them really to animals that we know. That's the purpose of doing it. Number five, look at the paragraph beginning. I do not know how long the word unwieldy in this paragraph is closest in meaning to clumsy. That was quite hard, especially as some of you probably didn't know what those words meant the other day either. Question six, we all stood in motionless amazement. What does this phrase suggest about how they felt? Now, I know in school before we've spoken about what the word motionless means and it means somebody who's really really still so you could have this suggests they stood still because it was something they hadn't seen before um so you know you would be motionless if you were either scared or um because it says here the word amazement we know that they're motionless for a positive reason because the word amaze um normally refers to something positive and then your predictions i have read some and some people are very very close so moving on to today's lesson, Thursday, we're going to continue to read the text. The last paragraph that we just read, we weren't sure what was going to happen, but we do know that in the last sentence, it said that they um, vanished from their sight. So these creatures vanished from their sight. And remember, it's being told by one person's viewpoint, this story, somebody called Malone. I looked at my comrades. The two professors were in silent ecstasy. What will they say in England of this? Professor Summerlee cried at last. They will say that you are a liar, said Professor Challenger, exactly as you and others said of me. In the face of photographs, faked Summerlee, clumsily faked. Who's to blame them? For this will seem a dream to ourselves in a month or two, said Lord John. What were they? Iguanodon, said Summerley. England was once alive with them when there was plenty of good lush green stuff to keep them going. I don't know what anyone else thinks, but this place makes me feel very uneasy, said Lord John. I had the same feeling of mystery and danger around us. In the gloom of the trees there seemed a constant menace, and as we looked up into their shady foliage, vague terrors crept into one's heart. The iguanodons we had seen were lumbering, inoffensive brutes, which were unlikely to hurt anyone. But what other creatures might there not be, ready to pounce upon us from their lair among the rocks of brushwood? Oh, so that's a very suspenseful um, ending to the text there. And I really like how the person who has written this um, has made us straight away infer that they're talking about grass up here by but they haven't said grass they've said good lush green stuff so you know i think that's really clever that the writer's done what the writer's done and notice in the last paragraph crept into one's heart um one here is being used as a pronoun and those of you who remember from writing that when we've looked this year should be realizing that actually this person speaks very formally because they've used the pronoun one um, and some of the other language in this text is also very quite formal, which tells us we can obviously infer that the character is formal. And funnily enough, it's the professor, I think, who's speaking formally. Right, so based on reading that part of the text, more questions for you to have a go at. Number eight, find and copy one word, not a phrase, one word that suggests Malone feels part of the team of explorers. Question nine, how can you tell that Professor Summerlee is an expert on dinosaurs? So what does it say in the text that tells us he's an expert? 
Question 10. Look at the paragraph beginning. I had the same feeling of mystery and danger around us. So looking at that last paragraph. Find and copy four different words from the rest of the paragraph that suggest danger. So literally one word on each line. And there are lots of words in that last paragraph. Find four separate words that suggest danger. Question 11. The mood of the characters changes throughout the extract. So remember, extract means a part of the text, which is what we've just read. Find and copy the group of words on page two. I looked at my comrades, which is what we've just read, where Lord John's mood changes. So notice that says a group of words, which means more than one. And B, how does Lord John's mood change in that part of the text? And then the last question for you to have a go at, based on what you've read, what does the last paragraph suggest might happen to the explorers next? Use evidence from, your, from that paragraph to support your prediction. And I really would, for this last question, put your point on one side in a table and your evidence on the other. So I think this and then your evidence from the text on the other side and remember your evidence has to come from the text and should have inverted commas around it some of those questions are a bit challenging um, give them a go and if you're stuck then um, get in touch uh, remember that you can go back to the text and you might for these particular questions need to actually do that and go back to the text but have a great day, all of you, and I will be in contact tomorrow. Goodbye.